Hey guys, it's me, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. Welcome to another tutorial. This one is another envelope art journal. I had so much fun creating this envelope art journal, and I'll put a link to it in the iCards in the top right hand corner that I absolutely wanted to make another one. And I found a different version of an envelope journal. So while with this one I used a square flap card, this one is going to use a contour flap, which is the triangular shape. The other project used three this one uses four. You could extend that to five or six pages if you wanted to add, but I wouldn't do more than that. The size of the envelope doesn't matter. What you're going to do is push this in like this. So you have an open double-sided flap here. You want a little bit of space so that it's free and doesn't catch. Then you're gonna take the triangle and add it in here. This is number three. And this is number four. And I'm just going to tuck that in here. So here's where you would add five and maybe six. And this flap is going to close over that. We're gonna glue that on the back. Now, I'm going to show you what not to do. Because I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to glue this in here. So I took everything apart and I glued that in and I stick this envelope in. This was the first piece that I had made. Here's the open, the double flap open. And I glued it down. And I'm getting ready to add the next one. Have you figured out what I've done wrong here? These flaps are open. But when I go to do this, of course, I just glued that shut. So now let's do it the right way. So assemble it, all the pages together. Double flap, single flap, single flap, all four envelopes, or five or six if that's what you want. Now you're going to start at the back making sure everything moves loosely, put glue on here. I'm just using glue stick and I'm pressing this down, getting a good solid seal. Now, pretty much it stays together, but when I look in here, it's not quite sealed right to the end. And I don't know that this is absolutely necessary, but I didn't want it to buckle when it got wet with paint. And I didn't want to catch it when I applied paint with the makeup sponge. So I'm just running some glue in here. If you've got glue in a fine line applicator, you can kind of squirt that in and press it down. And you remember, you want those flaps to, or the, at the, pockets to stay open. So you got to make sure that if you get glue that you don't have any seepage and glue it inadvertently down. So now because I want to do a sea themed journal, mini journal, I am using blues and teals and aquas and I am using heavy body paint. And I must say the envelopes took the paint fairly well. Now using a makeup sponge, you're probably, it's not putting as much wet paint on. So that probably helps. And because it's medium body paint, if you're using a thinner paint, a craft paint, you may have to play with it. You may have to allow for some drying time in between doing um, the pages. In the original um, envelope journal that I did, that I showed at the beginning, I colorized them before I assembled. And you could do that. I just thought I would try it this way. You could also, every section could be painted a different color if that's what you want. 
Here I've chosen a theme. I'm putting the paint underneath the flaps just so I don't see the white. But everything lay really flat in the end, so it really wasn't a problem. I'm mixing the colors in different orders, getting different looks on each page, but they're basically the same colors, so it's very cohesive. You could also take this once it's assembled and use your gel plate to get the first layers or the stenciling layers. Now I'm using my brayer, my little brayer from Ranger and white gesso and just adding that texture. I wanted to know how much these little envelope journals could take. Now you're getting kind of the pattern of the envelope when you brayer. I'm not too worried because I'm gonna do a lot of stenciling here. And I will put a link to all the stencils that I use in the description box, but this one's Endless Swirl. This one is called Geonetting. And on each section, I'm using a different one to start and I'm layering them in different orders. So you get a very different effect. Cohesive, the same, but different. This one's Fantangle. And I'm putting a coat of white first. This one is Peacock Doily. I just wanted a lot of paint. And usually I start with the white and then I do more colors. This one is called Screen View and I've moved to Aqua Paint here. So I'm doing all the same colors that were in that first coat, the background, but now I'm using some Aqua. I'm adding some different colors. And the aqua paint isn't showing up a lot uh, as well. I'm overlapping on top of the white. Endless swirl again. Not all the pattern needs to be up front. This one's called Retro Bursts. I just want to add lots of layers and lots of interest to my pages. Now I'm grabbing some Prussian blue. I want a little bit more contrast. So back with the Fantangle one. All of these stencils are six inch. And if you're looking for stencils, you can look in the description box below. You can get the six inch stencils at uh, Ninny's Napkins. She's got a great selection and she's willing to bring in other ones as well as there's a TCW Shopify link down below. Endless swirls. This is adding a lot of blue here and I like that. You can see adding the darker color really added that necessary contrast. It really bumped up the page. I'm absolutely loving these backgrounds. I'm adding a little bit more detailing looking at blank spots. Now, when you create a background, you need to think about what you're going to do for focal points. And this is, I caught, got in a little bit of trouble here because I added a lot of white and I planned on using, are we making my focal points with stencils again? You're going to see that with white modeling paste and white pearl modeling paste. 
and I wasn't get, going to get enough contrast. So, you know, I worked around it. This one is called Ethereal, and I love this motif over here. You've seen me use it time and time again. It's so versatile, as are all the ones that I've used in the backgrounds. They could be used for any background, for any theme. Yummy. Do you love them as much as I do? So Carmen Medlin, one of the designers with the Crafters Workshop, creates a whole bunch of great focal point images. And she has a large variety of um, sea ones. This one's jellyfish. And I've put white model, white pearl modeling paste, which is to die for. It has kind of a pearlized, iridescent effect. So it glows on here. I did give a little bit of a blue wash to the background to push back the white that I added so that the white modeling paste could really show off the stencil. These jellyfish are absolutely amazing. The detail is there. I taped off part of the stencil that I didn't want and I applied the modeling paste with a key card. Now, because I had gotten rid of a lot of the white, I'm adding the white back in right now with this ethereal stencil. But I'm not putting it where the jellyfish is. So there's always a workaround. You can do anything. It's just going to affect your next steps. Absolutely loving how this all works together. Now, some of the papers did lose their stick and they were starting to lift, so I was coming in with the glue stick to do that. Now, with the seahorse, I'm just using straight up TCW modeling paste. And I put some on my glass mat and then I apply it with a key card. Again, you see that I've taped off parts of the stencil that I do not want. Now, I knew the seahorse wasn't going to show up a lot because the background was very busy. But I've got a plan for that, which is why I didn't use the white pearl modeling paste. Now, when you're using modeling paste, you need to stop and clean your stencils. I like how the spines of the seahorse coordinates well with the stenciling that I have in that background. That's why I chose to do the seahorse on this background. So here's how I'm going to make the seahorse pop. I am taking white gesso and painting in the shape. So I still get the texture of the modeling paste, but I get the shape of the seahorse. And because it's solid, it stands out from the background. Can you see the difference? Absolutely. So with a lot of stencils that are focal images, that's a good tip. You can stencil them on with modeling paste and then apply gesso. And now I could have painted these on top of the gesso, and they would have been a color. But I had made a decision here that I wanted to keep it blues and whites. I didn't want to add the seahorse colors. But I could have done that. And you'll probably see me doing that on a different one. So this sand dollar stencil is one that I cut with my silhouette using some clip art basic shapes and then tweaking it. Now I'm putting the, the stencil part here and I'm stenciling white gesso through the stencil and giving it a dry. 
because everything's stacked one on top of the other, all the pages, you may have to stop and let this dry so that the pages don't stick together. And especially when I'm adding modeling paste, there was a lot of drying time in between. But I wanted to see if the envelopes stood up to the modeling paste, and they did. So now I'm putting the mask on, or the, the stencil of this part of it, and I'm using my Prussian blue, and I'm putting the detailing on this, these sand dollars. So I've got a large sand dollar, and I also cut a small one. FYI, Carmen and TCW do have a sand dollar on one of her stencils. I just don't have that one yet. So now I'm masking it off. It's a little close to the edge, and I just don't want to overlap. Since I have modeling paste on all the other ones, I want to use modeling paste, and this time I'm grabbing the white pearl modeling paste again. And I'm applying it with a key card. It's a little tough to get it smooth, but I figure texture's good. Grab a palette knife to try to help. And smooth it out a little bit here. I like the idea of having some texture on there. And that white pearl modern paste is just spectacular. That I set aside and let dry for a long time. It's fairly thick, so I went and got busy with something else. I decided I needed another sand dollar on this side. It looked a little empty. Wasn't quite happy with my composition. Here I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading around my sand dollar. both on top and then on behind. Now I'm doing the same thing with the seahorse. I want this to pop off the background, so I'm shading using the acrylic, floating acrylic technique. And you can see how that is really making it stand out even more. Now, I don't think this is a project that you're going to do necessarily in one sitting. And basically, it's like five separate pages. So think of it that way. Do a page a night. Now I'm doing the front of it, and I wanted to have kind of introduced that this was themed on the ocean. So I'm using, again, another Carmen Medlin stencil. This one's called Wave. And this time I've mixed clear modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop with my Prussian blue paint. I mixed it together on my glass mat and I'm applying it with the key card. And I chose to do blue because A, it's the cover, so I wanted it to be a little bit different. And I just didn't think the white was going to give me the effect that I wanted. and cleaning off the excess. Now I did save this clear modeling paste that was mixed with paint. It lasts for a very long time, like a couple months. So don't throw it away, put it in a container. Next, I went to figuring out the sentiments. So I searched for sentiments about the sea, about the ocean, about maybe seahorses, and I got some quotes that I liked. And then I looked at each one and tried to match the quote, the size of the quotes, the, how many words, to the different pages. And I just put post-it notes and I played with this and I, it took me a while to figure that out. Then I went on to Word and typed them out and did some word art using different fonts and I printed it out on different with different sizes. 
So we've got, you know, kind of large, medium, and smaller. There's the large one. If you're interested in buying my sentiment packs, there is a link in the description box. Once I decided on the quote and the size and playing around with that, I decided to I glue them down with my matte, liquid matte medium. This one, I thought these kind of looked like dream catchers. It says, we dream in colors borrowed from the sea. Love that quote and I put it down the middle. Here's another quote that I absolutely love. The ocean stirs the heart, inspires the imagination, and brings eternal joy to the soul. And I started on the one side, and then I'm bringing the eye through reading to the other side. And that's something you can do with your sentiments. Often when I put script on, I fussy cut around the script. I just, I don't like the look of so much white, especially when I've mixed and matched fonts. I love the look of mix and match fonts, but that's one of the problems. Now I could have printed this out onto tissue paper. I just didn't think that it would necessarily show so well with my very busy pattern background. So I wanted some white back there that's solid to just block out what was behind it. You can also colorize your sentiments. You could have, I could have painted them blue or gold for that matter or whatever color goes with what your page is. Now this seahorse, I hadn't done the, sh the shading on because it was wet at the time. And you can see the difference between the one that has the shading on the left and this one. It really, really makes a difference. Now there's, this one has the double pockets and I really wanted to bring up that triangle in the middle. So I'm shading around it to emphasize it. And I have a plan for the middle. Then I'm also shading around the outside. Now I'm using Prussian blue here, but I do come back afterwards and use black on all the pages. I shade the outside of all the pages, but I've only done the pockets, emphasize the pockets on this one because I wanna make that part of my composition. Like here, I don't want to see this, so I'm not going to shade around it. Now I'm using my Secura glaze pen. I've gone around the sentiments and I'm adding dash around where these pockets are because I want to emphasize them and I'll also use it around the outside edge. Give you a bit of the close-up. The Secura glaze pen is a great liner pen. It's nice and bold and broad. It goes on like a dream and it dries permanent. 
It's also dimensional and glossy. And I'm, this line is not perfectly straight. I don't even attempt to make it perfectly straight. I think when I started, I was so overly picky about making everything so perfectly straight and so, you know, perfect. And I've let go of a lot of that. It's very freeing. And while I do this on every page, I am not making you sit through all of it. I'm absolutely loving this seahorse page. And I think this would make a perfect canvas. So here's the cover. And I have it printed off again. I printed it off on various sizes. And I picked a font that kind of went with the background and was very bold. Tracing around. The sentiments and I've done that on every page. I did just say I wasn't going to make you watch this on every page, but I, I think this is the last one. I apologize. Loving that one as well. Now this one took a good long time to dry. So now I'm coming up to doing the finishing. I'm adding the star on that one. And then I decide, you know, there's only four elements on here. Odd numbers are good. So I decide I wanna put another one in. So you can. In the finishing, you're going to tweak. You're going to add what you see as missing. This one says, not all treasure is silver and gold. And that would be good for any page, not just a C page, but I thought it was perfectly applicable for the sand dollar page. I guess I, my memory isn't very good. I apologize. So now I need to do a little more shading around the modeling paste sand dollar, the white pearl modeling paste. I want to make it stand out a little bit. And I like how the motif that's on the sand dollar match, matches that retroburst stencil in the background. And again, that's why I chose to use the sand dollar on this background because that retroverse stencil really showed up. So when I was selecting which stencil to use on which page, I looked what at what was in the background and what would complement the stencils. And it's those little things that do make the page. And I will put a link to the floating acrylic tutorial that I have. If you want to learn how to do this technique and I do have, it's kind of a step by step. I kind of set you up to practice how to practice this skill.
And as you can see, when I'm doing it, I am turning the page to make it easier for me. So what kind of themed mini journal will you do with your envelopes? Would you be interested in a sea-themed sentiment pack? Let me know. Or what kind of theme sentiment pack would you be interested in? This one I wanted to add a little more teal or aqua. So I'm just using a wash and just adding a little bit more of that color into the background. Remember, you can always add and tweak it. And then I am splattering with gold. And I pre-thin my paint and keep it in those little plastic containers ready to splatter. And I find a lot of success that way. Now this is an old Crafters Workshop stencil. It, I don't believe, is any, is any longer in production. It was called Grunge Hearts, and I wanted to put the heart in there. It says, the heart inspires the heart. So I wanted the heart in there for a center motif and I and the grunge one worked perfectly with the seahorse. Now my back page I decided I wasn't going to leave it blank so I grabbed this conch shell stencil again designed by Carmen Medlin and I'm using the white pearl modeling paste using a key card. I figure out where the sentiment's going and glue that down to make space for this shell and then I use put it on. So here is my finished sea themed envelope journal, and I love it. it. The pockets are here. You can put in happy mail if you were mailing this to someone, or you can save your sea poems or memories of a sea trip can go in there. your little journals. Again, the pockets here, you can put whatever in there, pictures from your sea trip. Preserve your memories. I think that would make a great memory journal. Now, th these seahorses remind me of dream catchers, which is why I've paired them together. The sand dollar one. Loving that quote. Perfect match with the sand dollar. And the last one, it says, if you are lucky enough to live by the sea, you are lucky enough. And I am truly blessed because right now I do live by the ocean. It is a 10 minute walk. I can see it out of my window. And I'm very thankful for that. Now, as I was filming this, I thought, oh, I could actually make an enclosure here. Hmm. I could glue this onto this side, wrap it around. Oh, the ideas. Here's some close-ups of the finished pages in this envelope journal. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. I absolutely love it. I think it would make a great memory keeper of a sea trip. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know which page you like the best. Which one do you think would make a good canvas? As always, keep creating. Thanks so much for watching.